Hey everybody, Brian Goulet here of GouletPens.com with a very special guest, one Mr. John Lane from Pilot Corporation of America. John has uh, been on a few videos with us now, He's getting recognized in public for his fame here. Yes, Brian, I, I can thank you for that, Brian. Yes, yes, You're I, welcome. Getting, getting recognized in subways and in <laughs> at other pen events and <laughs> at airports and yes, I have Brian to thank for that. Yes. Well, you know, you just have a way on the camera, John. What can I say? Um, a lot, a lot to do with what we're going to show here. Yes, this is a particularly special video because we have here uh, one of the largest pen boxes that I've ever seen in my life, um, and uh, it is the the main set for the Pilot 100th anniversary. Uh, so we wanted to do a nice luxuriously lengthy video for you here today to show off this incredible set because we only have one here, and once it's gone. It's gone. And it might be another hundred years before we see another one, and I don't think either of us will be around for that one. I, uh, I definitely will not be, Brian. <laughs> so, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about kind of what led up to this? You know, it's Pilot's anniversary. What went into this set? Why is it such a big deal? Well, I think the last time I was here, you tried to coax some information out of me about uh, about the hundred-year anniversary, and of course, of course, I said nothing, and that caused even more of a of a, of a furor out there. Um, You're good at keeping secrets, John. What can I say? Uh, they threatened me of taking my children away from me if this leaked out. Um, I first saw this particular set uh, about three, three and a half years ago in Japan, um, almost three years to the date, and it's unlike anything that I've ever seen. Um, I was just, I sat there and just stared at it. Um, between the presentation and the pens itself, um, this is all commemorating Pilot's 100th anniversary, Pilot Japan's 100th anniversary, um, with the uh, seven gods uh, of, of good fortune. And so, um, besides the set, we've got a, an emperor size um, Mount Fuji and a Yukari size Mount Fuji with the, uh, with the Meiji Muru, which is the ship um, that's attached to Pilot. Um, Again, this, I've never really seen anything like that. There was just on the box alone, there were three artists doing it. It was a combination of Makie and Chinkin, which is usually never done. Um, inside the pens are seven pens, and there was a, a, a separate artist for each pen. Uh, there's a tray, a Makie tray, and a pen stand because these pens do not have clips. And when you're writing and want to take a break, you put the pen in the tray. And then once you lift everything else up, there's seven new colors of Hiroshi Zuku ink that are also very limited. Everybody's just dying because we're talking about them and we've got them right here. But we'll show them, I promise you. We're just well, making them nice and, nice and lengthy So here. Brian doesn't have to unbox anything. <laughs> here they are. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Video's done. Yes. There you go. Thank you very much. We're just going to chill the rest of the time. No. Um, so we'll do a whole unboxing. The reason we wanted to start from this stage is because it's really an entire experience actually unboxing this thing. The presentation, I think, is every bit as impressive mm -hmm. as the pens themselves. So without further ado, it's not very often that I'll put on some white gloves, but this high-end maquillé stuff is usually what will cause it for me. You probably did that as a child with your first communion, didn't you? <laughs> No, can't say that I did. <laughs> that's, uh, I think that's more the ladies that do the white glove thing, oh, John. Yeah. It's not so much the dudes uh, these days. But uh, anyway, there we go. So I'll be awkwardly uncomfortable in my white gloves because I'm not usually so fancy. But I figured if any set deserved it, it would be this one. So let's start off. This is a huge box. Weighs probably 10 pounds. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly. We lift it up. Okay. And every piece that is separated here is covered in paper so that it will not actually smudge or crinkle up anything inside the actual packaging. So it has this flap that folds down to give you easier access into the box because it's a rather sizable box. <clears throat> now it comes with this thing. We don't 100% know exactly what this is. We didn't want to take it out of the packaging because it seems like it wants to be in there. Um, but it's like an unwoven cloth. And we think what it is is kind of like a, almost like a little table runner mm -hmm. of sorts where you can lay out the pens. Uh, so if you have like a bare wood surface like this, you you're not pens, just plopping pens The pen right is the box. Everything is big enough to, uh, to hold it all. So there you go. So that uh, will just go off to the side. A little bit of material there, just normal pilot stuff. And then there's this kind of wood cloth that unwraps. And this is where we start to get to the good stuff, right? Now, do you know what the top of the box actually says here, John? I believe that it is in reference to the seven gods of good fortune. Okay. 
and it's got this rather thick, very high quality strap, string, I don't know what you call this. I'm not a which which you have now uh, <laughs> successfully retied now uh, three or four times. A couple times, yes. yes. Because we got the set and we wanted to make sure that everything was okay inside. Normally with high-end collector stuff like this, we try to leave it pristine and don't touch it. But um, there is ink inside here. We wanted to make sure that everything was in good shape. So, And then, of course, unboxing it for you all. So now it's going to get a little tricky because we got to get this thing out of the box. So there's a lid that comes off, and I gotta. If you wanna pick that up, I'll just take this white box and. Okay. There we go. Okay. And these are actually attached to the bottom of the box, so they kind of just chill out right there. And then there's a wooden box, and there's a. This is a kind of a traditional display technique that's used, right? Mm hmm. This is the same type of material that our standard emperors and yukari royales and yukaris come in. Okay. And then this just slides off right here. Then it's got this padded sheet here that just folds nicely on top and then you see this... Do you know what kind of material this is? It seems like a silk it's, or it's something like that. Woven silk? silk, yes. Woven silk cloth, which is folded very nicely in here. Whew. I'm like nervous even just getting into this thing, okay? So, you see how this is an entire experience. It's got paper, and then this is where things really start to get exciting because you get to see the actual handwork in here. So, I'm actually going to turn this to the side a little bit here so that you can see the box itself is... I don't even know what to say. It's incredible. I'm going to lift the lid up for you so you can see what's going on. So we've got... This is a combination of Makie and then Mount Fuji, and the waves are all done with Chinkin, which, as you know, is the art of carving into the barrels, or in this case, a box, and then filling in with the either gold or platinum dust. And we've got a video that shows more details of the Chinkin, so you can go check that out if you want to see the techniques. Um, and you said that it's not very common to have the two techniques mixed together, is that no, right? it's not. And there are actually three artists that, uh, that did this box. And how long would you guess it probably took them just to do this lid? Um, I would put this up with, with a emperor style. Chinkin is a little bit slower to do because, again, each, each part there is, is engraved or, or carved into the, into the box and then filled in, and then the whole thing had to be lacquered over. So you have a lot of things going on here at once, and this is a uh, it's part of a takia makie or raised makie finish. Hmm. I did want to mention on the underside of the box too, it has the artist signatures, mm -hmm. who I guess they're the ones who did the box, the right? Box. Yep. Yeah, when it's and it's lacquered on the underside too. Yes, it is. So it's uh, through and through here, and then we've got these little paper strips that keep the box from touching itself even, especially while in transit. Now, this Yuji lacquer is pretty tough stuff, but especially in, in shipping, we don't want it to uh, rub up against itself too much. It's got a cloth, so mm -hmm. you can wipe it off because it is shiny black and it's going to attract tons of dust and fingerprints and stuff like that. Uh, and then it has some detailed information in here about you know, each of the pens. I haven't opened this up, this is sealed, so I don't really want to open it up, but we have some digital information that we have on our website um, that goes into details about all of the different pens. This is a write-up about the Seven Gods of Good Fortune and a letter from Shu Ito, who is uh, the president of Pilot in Japan, who actually started with us here in America. When I started with Pilot in 1988, Shu was in our Connecticut office, so nice. he's a good friend. Oh, nice. Did not know that. And now we get into the actual box itself. It has a little placard in here in the top. Okay, and then in the placard it has the number engraved that matches the outer box, which also matches the pens. And this set is number two out of 25. So this set is number two, and number two in Japanese, every number has a meaning. Mm -hmm. uh, and number two means easy which is not bad for a good fortune set. That's right. <laughs> easy good fortune is never a bad thing. And I right? suspect it will be very easy for you to sell this brand. <laughs> well, we're hoping. <laughs> um, now, this is a tray. This is kind of what you alluded to earlier. 
Um, this is a tray that's actually meant to go in tandem with the pen rest. And these are two designs under this is the Wingbirds, which was a original release in 1994 on a Yukari pen, and then the Turtle, which we've featured several times on some Yukari pens. So it's kind of recalling a little bit of pen history here. Mm -hmm. And then in tandem with the tray is the pen rest. As you mentioned, there's no clips for these pens, so there's a Yurushi lacquered pen rest that you can set the pen down into your tray if you want to really look fancy. Unfortunately, these are not available individually, these trays, because I suspect we'd get calls for that too. Oh, no doubt. Just the tray itself is impressive looking. And then when we lift up this right here, we get to the goods, right? The pens themselves. So we got seven different pens here, and these are Yukari size pens. So they're not like the huge, huge emperor size. Right. It's more of a, I don't know, I guess you'd call it a medium size pen. Mm -hmm. You know, good, good everyday writer for people of all hand sizes. <laughs> uh, not that that's probably the main reason why someone would be interested in this, but um, we'll go in through and just kind of explain uh, at least a little bit about each pen. I mean, we could spend an hour talking about all this, all the details of it, but we'll at least kind of showcase um, each pen just a little bit. So the first one that we have here is a Bisu, and this is the God of Prosperity. And there is a special nib on here that's engraved with the Pilot 100th anniversary. These are all medium nib, correct? Correct. So that's the first one. The next one we have Forgive me, we're gonna butcher all these names probably, but Dai Kuk Ten. Dai Kuk Ten. The god of treasure as well as happiness, prosperity, and better fortune. I'm sensing a theme here of prosperity. Yes. <laughs> all right, the next one we have is Bisa Montan. the god of financial good fortune and competition. Okay. So there you go. And this is the most, probably aggressive looking one of the bunch. I like the big kind of flaming wheel on top there. This next one is Banzai Tan. And this is unique amongst the seven gods because she's a goddess. She's worshiped as the god of wisdom and said to represent the virtue that exists in a marriage bond. I think this one's actually one of my favorites because I'm a big fan of Rodden. Mm -hmm. And I just love the fluidity here mixed in with the Rodden. Very, very cool. Next one we have is the Fukuro Kaju. Fukuro Kaju. This is the god of personal virtue. Next, we have this is Juru Zen. Now, this is worshipped as the god of longevity and prolonged life. And then, last but not least, is the Hote Zan. And this is the god of good fortune and matrimonial happiness. So, that takes care of the pens. I don't know if there's anything more you want to say about that, specific techniques that are used. I mean, there's, there's just so much going on with all these pens, John. I mean, there's, we, ha we have a video, let me just start off by saying we have a video that explains in more detail the different techniques. Mm -hmm. And this one pretty much uses is, yeah, all of them, I think. Um, maybe not as much chinkin' in here. Uh, you got that on the box lid. Yeah, there's no, much on there's the no chink in, in, in the pens, okay. just, just on the lid. Yeah. But as you said, I mean, there's such a, such a wide variety of designs, and none of these look alike. The only thing they have in common is they're a god of good fortune. And from what I understand, um, each artist, it's, it was an individual artist that made each pen. So correct. there were seven different artists that focused one on each pen, correct? Correct. Okay. 
and then each one of them sign their signature on the pen so you know exactly who did it. Do you know if every single one was made by one individual artist? Yeah, each pen. Each pen should be different. So when there, there's two signature lines, that means that it was done by an individual artist. And when you see the two lines, one is the Machia Guild, and then the artist, his or her signature, and his or her crest. It is in red. And then it's not just the pens, but each one has a corresponding ink as well to go along with it. When we lift this off, and we have the ink underneath. And this is specially formulated ink, correct? This is correct. new. It's not just repackaged to Shizuku or something like that. No, these are seven inks that correspond with the pens, and they will be available for a limited basis, which we'll get to in a minute. So these will be initially packaged in this set in our mini bottle. They will be available in a seven-pack set in March of 2019, as will the limited bottles of the 50 milliliter Iroshizuku ink will be available for a limited time with a special anniversary label on it. So that'll be March of 2019. And also to go along with that, we will be offering the Seven God uh, pens um, in a set sold individually. So you'll be able to get all seven pens in a set but the difference is, is that the, the, um, they'll have clips on them. So that will differentiate between the set pens and the individual pens. And they will also be available in March of 2019. So I know that this is um, an incredibly impressive set. Uh, everybody's been kind of anticipating what Pilot was going to come out with for the 100th anniversary. Uh, you knew well in advance. You kept us in the dark, uh, which was the right choice because you know, you were sworn to secrecy and you were mm -hmm. bound to that, which is perfectly fine. Um, there's not any type of like mass available 100th anniversary pilot anything really that's come out this year. Um, but I hope that by at least producing this video, we could show you all what they have been working on um, and to really show they haven't just been kind of sleeping. They've been no, working is... incredibly hard on these and unbelievable sets. Which is why we've had so few pieces of regular maquillage is that the artists have been working on these to get these so they would be released. Um, these will be shipped the week of October 15th. Um, the uh, other two that we'll show you here in a minute uh, will be shipping in November. So Brian, I don't have these other two anniversary offerings with me because they're just simply not in stock yet. Uh, we expect them in the next couple of weeks, but we'll be offering the Emperor Fuji there were 99 of these made. 14 are coming to the U.S. The Mount Fuji is all crushed quail egg shells and is presented in this commemorative box with a bottle of ink. The other piece is, is Yukari size, the same size as the, um, the Seven Gods, uh, the Fuji Mejimuro, uh, which is Mount Fuji on the, on the cap, and the Mejimura, which is the ship that Mr. Namiki came to uh, Japan in to start the pilot company. And these will be available in November. There are 800 of these made and only 81 coming to the U.S. And again, they will have the 100th anniversary stamped on the nib on both of them. And what are these ones going to be selling for? Uh, the Emperor is 9600 and the Yukari size is a very affordable $1,600. It's actually not bad for a 100th anniversary pen, in my opinion, if you happen to be a fan of these in general. Well, there's been some question, Brian, as to how much this set is. <laughs> Well, I would say that it's priceless, John. Um, this set retails for $48,000. Which is uh, the most expensive pen-related thing. I can't even call it a pen, really, because it's a whole set. It's a presentation. It's, it's really elaborate, but it's, it's by far the most expensive thing that we've ever had in our building. Uh, so I'm a little bit nervous, but also excited and honored to have this in here. This is the most expensive offering that we've had several years ago, many years ago actually. We had the Miyabi set, which was a set of three pens, and that retailed for $25,000. Mm. Uh, but this is, as you mentioned, by far the, uh, the most extravagant thing that we've done. But I mean between the pens, the tray, and of course the box top, which is my favorite part of this, uh, it's well worth the money. I think it's a bargain, in fact. A bargain. I, I have not heard this described as a bargain, <laughs> but leave it to Brian to be the ultimate uh, optimist. Well, when you consider everything that goes into it, I would say uh, you can truly appreciate it, if maybe not monetarily, at least for the craftsmanship and artisanship that, that goes into this.
So if you are interested in one of these sets, um, you can let us know about your interest in it. Um, we'll have more details on that uh, on an individual basis for anyone that's interested. This is not the typical type of uh, pen product that we have available here, so we are deciding how exactly to to handle this because um, I think there's going to be more people that are probably interested in a set like this than there will be sets available. Um, and we are going to go about it in a way that uh, kind of honors and respects pilots' wishes as well. So. John, thank you so much for coming here and being willing to show this incredible set so that even those who maybe it's a little bit out of the price range of something that they would be able to attain, uh, we can at least have this video for posterity uh, to mark this extremely momentous time in pilot's history. Is there anything else you wanted to cover? Um, I'm not sure that this pen set will ever get out of this building because Brian has opened up this box at least six times. Uh, oh, I know that there's three, three. I know that there's a collection going on in back of me with the Goulet staff. They're trying to pool their money together to buy it. So <laughs> <laughs> I know we had quite a bit of interest in the training, so we'll see. Yes, indeed. Well, thank you for being willing to come and do it. Um, if you guys have any questions about any of this, you can let us know in the comments or shoot us an email, live chat, whichever way you want to go about it. I gotta get these gloves off because I just feel weird now. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And I hope you enjoyed this incredibly special video. Thanks so much for watching and right on.